Howdy! Welcome to Responsibility Assignment Matrix Explained. Clear and effective communication is of high importance for anyone in a project management role. Regardless of the organizational structure you're leading, project assignments need to be unambiguous. Work Breakdown Structures, WBS, shows how project components are broken down into work packages. So this is represented by the hierarchy on the left and what I'm going to do is draw a little bit so you can see those are actually open boxes with a hierarchical lines drawn between them. So that's WBS. That basically demonstrates the work. Resources are shown in a hierarchy as resource breakdown structures typically organized by function or department. This is over here. What's interesting is that in the PMBOK guide, the letters RBS are also duplicated for risk breakdown structure. So you've got two to get confused on. Anyways, a RBS can be helpful at identifying who's on the team, their skills, and other stuff. Obviously, the two can't be accomplished unless these two are connected. And that's shown by the arrow right in the middle, the two-headed arrow right in the middle. So I see that. Da da. Okay. And just in case you wanted to know, there's more information about work breakdown structures in one of our other tutorials. But get out of here. Okay. So making sure that there's you understand and the team understands what the connections are tends to leave the team into a state of. Now what do we do? For this reason, there's a cool tool called RAM. This may be not exactly what you think of when you think of a RAM. There could be random access memory or ramming into somebody, but no, we're going to bring this little cute little uh, RAM across the screen for no apparent reason. Okay, what's a RAM definition? A RAM shows the connection between work packages and it stands for Responsibility Assignment Matrix. There can be all sorts of different ways to depict this and I prefer pictures as you might have guessed cartoon action figures tends to work the best. <laughs> so bye bye and get rid of that one. Okay before we proceed we're showing you a great way to depict these assignments. Why even do this? What is the benefit? First off there's roles People knowing what exactly they're supposed to do can really benefit from a RAM. This is especially true when your team is geographically distributed or using external resources such as contractors. Number two, the HR plan. You can create a plan and hopefully set expectations. I'd recommend setting up a plan at Project Kickoff. You also may want to remind people at key points in a project. Now just in case you were wondering, the PMBOK guide has some great information regarding RAMs in the Human Resource Management Knowledge Area. There's a process called Develop Human Resource Plan and it's, it's uh, highlighted right there in the middle. You can see that. There's great information in the PMBOK guide regarding this whole concept including RAM. Now let's examine folks' roles on a team for the project in terms of something called a Reiki. We usually use the first letter to represent each of these and the interesting thing about this is this is important to show the role of people on a project. And you can basically do that. In this particular team we have identified four folks on the team. The first person is called Cat. What Cat's role on this project is it's going to be responsible. So we put an R next to her. Now responsible stands for basically the person that performs the work on the task and there can be multiple team members with this responsibility role. Greg is accountable. We put an A there. And that person basically is the one responsible for approving the work. The person that is accountable is typically the one who approves or oversees the work. And there's usually one accountable person on a given project. And then we have Troy. He wants to be informed so we put an I next to him. What inform means is that typically it's one-way communication of project status. So Troy may not be that involved with the details 
but he is certainly wants to be informed. And then finally you have Ramesh. We're going to put a C for consulted. He's also on another project and a consulted role is someone who's a individual whose opinions are sought and usually requiring two-way communications. So now you see how people have defined roles for a given project using the Reiki matrix. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Another way to show this thing is that we have a piece of paper or a spreadsheet that identifies the people by name and then their roles across. So you can do it visually or you can do it in some sort of a table or spreadsheet. So that's how that would work. The second way I want to show it is where people's roles may change over time. In this particular case we have identified and I'm going to show this as over time. Okay, That's the delta uh, symbol in case you're wondering because I sure can't tell either. Okay, so this particular way to manage the Reiki matrix is that each person on the team, and again we're using the same folks, they may or may not have different roles during the phase of a given project. And this is a little waterfallish, so I apologize, but you get the idea. So the one thing I think would be fun is I've been wanting to do this, and look, I'm going to pretend like I'm actually writing on the chalkboard here. So that was fun. Not really. Okay, so let's go right ahead and do this over time. Now, at the beginning of a project, Kat's role is one of where she is responsible at the research period. So let's put an R right there. Greg's role at the research period is one of A, accountable. And Troy's role, role is to be informed. And Ramesh is also responsible. So actually Ramesh is going to be actually responsible with Kat on the research phase of a project. Then during the design phase, Kat changes from a responsible role to accountable role. And then Greg goes into responsible mode where again Greg's doing the actual work. Troy is once again being informed and then Ramesh's role changes to that of consulting. Ramesh is more of a consultant and advisor but he did get intimately involved with the project of the research period of time but then his role changed to consult. Typically this happens when someone is part-time on the project or shared among multiple projects. Let's go through the final phase, validation. This is where CAT changes to an A, accountable. So that means CAT is still accountable. So what happens is at the very beginning, CAT actually got down and did some research with Ramesh and then for the duration of the project she turned into the overall person to oversee and to make sure that uh, the work got done. Greg's role still remains as responsible so he's still doing the work. Troy gets involved now and he's doing the work which typically means in this particular case he is probably in QA and actually starts testing. And then Ramesh wants to be informed. He's not quite involved with the um, consulting anymore. He definitely is not involved with being responsible but he does want to know when this product shipped. So I think you get the idea of a couple ways of doing the Reiki chart. Okay, let's go through the pros. What's a positive? One, no ambiguity. And people hear mysterious things and imagine certain roles, but there's nothing like knowing exactly what's involved. It's particularly good when you're using contractors, by the way, to make sure everybody's role between the mothership, the company that's hiring, and the contractors that are working for you or any other external workers and of course those that are geographically distributed. The other thing is once you do it, and again I recommend you do it at project inception, it's easy to understand. It makes sense and it cuts down on those handoffs where people aren't sure who's supposed to do what. What's a negative? It only takes about five to ten minutes for a team to come up with the matrix and I don't think there are any negatives. So shoot, you should go right ahead and use it. And now you all know.